In lesson 53, we'll be doing some metric and English to metric conversions, and then we'll also be looking at weight combinations by percent in a chemical. Now I'm going to combine part A and B of this lesson. Metric conversions, those are just like English conversions that you've been doing, except you have metric units instead of English units. So there's really nothing difficult about those compared to the other unit multiplier problems you've been doing. Now English to metric, when you're working with units of length, that unit that I have up there, 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters, that's the key unit that you need to remember in converting from English to um, metric units. Maybe you remember that from your previous algebra books. But if not, there it is again. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Now some other good metric conversions to remember are like one meter. That equals 100 centimeters. One centimeter, that equals 10 millimeters. One kilometer, that equals 1,000 meters. And you might want to write those down like in the front of your book so that you'll have a place to reference those very easily, especially if you don't have them memorized. Let's do some practice problems. Practice problem A, I want you to convert 60 inches to meters. So remember when you're doing a unit multiplier problem, you always write down what's given first. And so we'll say 60 inches, and then we want to convert that to meters. So how would we do that? Well, remember that the English to metric conversion factor that you need to go from English to metric is 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So we'll convert from inches to centimeters first, then we'll go centimeters to meters. And so I'll do that inches to centimeters conversion first, and we'll say 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch. Remember, we can always write equal values like that as a fraction. That represents 1. 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. And so that is the same thing as a fraction equal to 1, since those are equal quantities. They look different because the units are different. So the values described using those units are different numbers. Now our inches cancel. And then we can do centimeters to meters. And so we would put 1 meter over 100 centimeters. And so the centimeters cancel. And now let's multiply out. We'd have 6 times 2.54 times 1 in the numerator. So we just say 6, I'm sorry, 60, not 6. 6 times 2.54 over 1 times 100, or just 100 meters. And so we just leave our answer like that. They don't want us to multiply all that out. That's not the goal of doing the unit multiplier problems in this book. The goal is to get the right units and the right factors. Next, let's do practice problem B. Convert 60 kilometers squared to miles squared. Now this time we're going from metric to English. And it's important to know what metric units are and what English units are. So kilometers, meters, centimeters, millimeters, those are metric units of length. Miles, inches, feet, yards, those are English units for length. Hopefully you know those pretty well already. So let's go ahead and convert this. We always write down what's given first, 60 kilometers squared. And so we want to go from English or from metric to English. So we need to go kilometers to meters, meters to centimeters, and then we do our English to metric conversion factor. And so we'll go centimeters to inches, then inches to feet, feet to miles. So we have a lot of conversion factors to do for this one. Now we're doing square meet kilometers and square miles, so that means each unit multiplier we can square it instead of writing it out twice. So let's do that to save a little bit of space and then we'll do kilometers to meters so there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. We square that so the kilometers squared will cancel and then we need to go to centimeters now in one meter there are 100 centimeters 
we square that, our meters cancel. Now we can go centimeters to inches. In one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. Square that, centimeters cancel. Now we need to go inches to feet, and there are in one foot 12 inches. We always need to make sure and write our unit multiplier the correct way. We can't put 12 inches over one foot because then our inches would not cancel. Now they do though, and we square that. Don't forget to square that. And then lastly, feet to miles, one mile equals 5,280 feet. Square that, and the feet cancel. Now I need to simplify that. I went ahead and erased the solution to practice problem A, so I'd have somewhere to write this. And so let's just work on the numerator first, and we would have 60 times 1,000 squared times 100 squared times 1 times 1 times 1. So those all just equal to 1. We don't write those over 2.54. squared times 12 squared times 5280 squared. And then our units at the end, can't forget those, square miles. Pretty big conversion factor there. It's important to recognize since that was area that we were dealing with, that each conversion factor has to be squared, either that or you have to write it out two times. Memorize those conversion factors that I have highlighted and at least write them down somewhere that you can remember where they are in case you do forget, like the front of your book is a good place. Now in these problems on weight combination by percent, they're basically an application of what you learned in lesson 37 about chemical compounds. And if you remember in that lesson, what you were doing was solving problems, setting up ratios based on the chemical compounds. And you would have to figure out the weights or gram atomic masses of each individual component and what it contributed to the total weight of that compound. So a key word in this problem that I have here on the board, what percentage by weight of Na2S2O3 is the sulfur? A key component is that word weight. So we're not just counting up the atoms here. We're going to figure out how much each of them contributes to the total weight or gram molecular mass of that molecular compound, Na2S2O3. That's called sodium thiosulfate, if you're curious what that means. Sodium thiosulfate, one use for that is like in aquariums. If you have some chlorine drops or dechlorination drops for your aquarium, that is usually sodium thiosulfate mixed with water. It's a solution of sodium thiosulfate. So to figure out the percent by weight of sulfur in sodium thiosulfate, we need to figure out the contribution of the sulfur to the total weight, and then we also need to figure out the total weight or gram molecular mass for that compound. Let's figure out the gram molecular mass first. And so we write down each individual element. Sodium is Na, sulfur is S, oxygen is the O and there's two sulfurs in that compound. I'm sorry, two sodiums. We'll start with sodium. Its mass, one sodium's mass, is 23 grams. So that's what I have there in parentheses right above the problem that I'm doing. So I say 2 times 23, that equals 46. Sulfur, there's two of those. You, have, you can always tell how many of each element there are because of the subscript number there. And so that S2, that tells me there's two sulfurs. And then their mass is 32, so times 32, that would be 64. And then oxygen, there's three of those, times their mass, which is 16, that equals 48. So we total those up, and that would total to 158. So the percentage by weight of sulfur in that compound would be 64 divided by 158 
and then times that by 100. Or 100%. And you could just do that on your calculator. 64 times 100 and then divided by 158 gives you about 40.506. I'll just round that up to the nearest whole number and so that would be 41%. So that's how much sulfur is in terms of percentage in that compound. Think about those chemical compound problems that we've been doing. Usually you'd have want to know a certain amount of one thing and then you would have some other materials. So the other materials in that Na2S2O3, those would weigh 59%. 41% of the weight of sodium thiosulfate is from the sulfur. 59% of the weight is from the other two materials, sodium and oxygen. Let's do one more. Look at practice problem B. What percent by weight of CH4 is carbon? CH4 is methane. That's like natural gas, like if you have a gas burning stove at your house. Usually that's methane coming out of there. We want to know how much the carbon contributes to the total weight of methane. So first we figure out the gram molecular mass for methane, and then we can figure out the percentage that the carbon contributes. Now, I didn't write down the gram atomic masses for each element, the carbon and the hydrogen. Maybe you remember what they are. Carbon, there's one of those, and its gram atomic mass is 12. So we say times 12 equals 12. Hydrogen, there's four of those, and their gram atomic mass masses are one each. And so four times one is four. So the total is 16. And so the percentage that the carbon contributes would be 12 over 16 times 100%. Now we could factor 4 out of 12 and 16 and we'd get 3 fourths times 100% or 0.75 times 100%. So that's just 75%. That would be the percentage by mass of carbon in methane. So to figure out these weight combinations by percent, figure out the gram molecular mass of the compound first, and then do the mass of whatever element is in question, its total contribution to the mass, not just an individual mass of one element. If there's two of them, then you need to do two times its mass, or if there's three of them, you need to do three times its mass. Do the total contribution for that element in the compound divided by the total mass of the compound, and then that will give you percentage. Okay, well that's all for lesson 53.